It really is a rare and beautiful thing when a popular TV show spawns an actually good spin-off, even more so when the spin-off ends up being even better than the original show it came from. I don't know about you, but I'd say that's a pretty impressive achievement. So let's take a look at some of them. I'm Amy from What Culture, and here are 10 TV spin-offs better than the original. 10. Daria from the original show Beavis and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead was lewd, crude, and frequently hilarious. A clear forerunner to South Park, it mixed satirical observations and outlandish humor to often great effect, although its very nature meant it was often pretty hit or miss. Daria, on the other hand, which wasn't created by Mike Judge, but did center on a character established in Beavis and Butthead, took a very different approach. It distanced itself quite literally from the off, with Daria's family moving to a new town, and that distancing would only continue through the show's five seasons. Smart and sophisticated, where Beavis and Butthead was dumb and silly, Daria was one of the first shows to truly capture the essence of high school. Like, say, Freaks and Geeks that would arrive a couple of years later, the show was not only incredibly fresh but also authentic. It helped that the writing was razor sharp in its observations and genuinely funny to boot, but with a sweetness not found in its parent show to make it even more rounded. With Daria herself fleshed out into a high school protagonist unlike any audiences were used to at the time, this was ahead of its time and miles ahead of Beavis and Butthead. 9. Mork and Mindy from the original show Happy Days. The classic American sitcom Happy Days had a lot going for it at the time, with a great cast, its 50s nostalgia, and a fun sense of humor. But one thing it mostly didn't have was Robin Williams. The actor guest starred in an episode of Happy Days that sees him appear as Mork in Richie Cunningham's Dream, which it turns out was actually planting the character to set up the spin-off. Mork came to Earth, was taken in by Mindy, and the show was born. It didn't get the same reception as Happy Days, nor its other spin-off, Laverne and Shirley, but it does deserve a legacy better than the one it got. It didn't play things safe as the other two shows did, and its plot offered up commentary on American culture and human nature that was as insightful as it was entertaining. The whole cast was solid too, but of course, the magic ingredient was Williams. We all know that he was a singularly gifted comedic talent, and this was one of the first showcases of it. He would frequently improvise his lines, so much so that gaps were left in the scripts for him to do this. And whilst he'd go on to do much bigger and better things, everything great about him was on full display here, ensuring that this show was always guaranteed to make you laugh out loud. 8. Phoenix Knights from the original show That Peter Kay Thing there was a time in the early 2000s when, in the UK at least, Peter Kay was the man. He had two stand-up specials, he had that Peter Kay thing, and he had Phoenix Knights, which spawned its own not quite as great but still good spin-off, Max and Paddy's Road to Nowhere. That Peter Kay thing was a six-part series, each focusing on a different set of characters, and it was the characters of the Neptune Club, the show's second episode, that became the basis for the spin-off. The Neptune became the Phoenix, but it retained just about everything else, and expanded upon it over the course of 12 episodes. Like Faulty Towers and The Office, it's the kind of show where you can't believe it only ran for a dozen episodes because it's just so endlessly rewatchable, and so few shows have so perfectly encapsulated and lovingly satirized the working class North. With an array of colorful characters, some absurd moments of humor, but a lot of warmth behind it too, this is a linchpin of British comedy in the 2000s. 7. Xena Warrior Princess from the original show Hercules The Legendary Journeys Believe it or not, Xena first appeared in Hercules' first season, but the character was initially supposed to be limited to just three episodes. However, the reception was so great that not only did they change those plans, but they launched an entirely new series based around her. Whilst Hercules itself offered up some swords and sandals fun and was popular in its own right, it was very much just okay, and Xena Warrior Princess went to a whole new level. Warrior Princess did offer up the same swordplay action as its predecessor, and for many, that would have been enough, but the show also offered up a far more complicated journey as it set Xena on the path of redemption. It was unabashedly female-driven, paving the way for heroes like Buffy, but it also did a great job of deepening the mythology and lore of the series too. It might not stand up too confidently to many of the fantasy series we've got today, but this was an important step in raising and meeting the ambitions of the genre, whilst also managing to be wholly entertaining at the same time. 6. NCIS from the original show JAG NCIS is now such a ubiquitous franchise, with 16 seasons and two spin-offs of its own, that it's easy to forget that it actually started life elsewhere. That was on Jack, which itself ran for 10 seasons, and introduced characters and concepts that would go on to appear in NCIS. Jack was a solid enough legal procedural with a military twist, but NCIS has far more in common with the similarly named CSI. It takes a more forensic look at things, quite literally when it comes to fan-favorite character Abby, and has been all the more interesting to watch because of it. One of the main factors 
factors in establishing the show's great reputation was its stellar cast and strong characters, led by industry vet Mark Harmon. Its premise and writing means that even in season 16, it remains effortlessly watchable, which couldn't be said for Jag by the end of its own run. 5. Torchwood Children of Earth from the original show Doctor Who when Doctor Who was revived in 2005, it introduced us not only to a new Time Lord, but also another time traveller, Captain Jack Harkness. Instantly a fan favourite and played with bags of charisma by John Barrowman, the spin-off Torchwood was launched just a few years later. It's kind of debatable which is the better of the two series, since both have been inconsistent over the years. Torchwood dipped in Season 2 and Miracle Day didn't start off too strong. Doctor Who, on the other hand, can live or die depending on the Doctor, the showrunner, or just what exactly Stephen Moffat is going for. So, okay, it's a bit of a cheat, but if the playing field is relatively level, then there's one run that stands above them all. Torchwood's third season, titled Children of Earth, was a five-episode event series that aired over the course of a week. Tackling an alien invasion, with them demanding Earth's children, it becomes a dark, tangled story that left audiences glued to screens for five nights running. It managed to keep the action grounded while still offering up sci-fi thrills, and mix that with real suspense, human drama, and some gut-wrenching emotion. Post-2005, the Hooniverse has never been better. 4. Star Trek The Next Generation from Star Trek The Original Series Star Trek blazed a trail when it debuted in 1966, completely changing the game for what a sci-fi TV show could be. Whilst movies fleshed out things further, it was the next generation that most fully realised the potential of Star Trek as a TV show. Starting in 1987 and running for seven seasons, it was afforded much more time to grow, and it used it wisely. The characters were better developed, the aliens more imaginative, and the stories were much richer. TNG essentially took out all of what made the original series great and expanded on it, and was able to toss out any that just didn't work or was a bit outdated. It was able to lean harder into its sci-fi trappings than the original series ever was, which in turn helped turn it into a smarter, more nuanced series. And at the heart of all of this was Patrick Stewart's Picard, the finest captain to ever grace a Trek series. 3. Saved by the Bell from the original show Good Morning Miss Bliss A sitcom centred on the life and career of a high school teacher called Miss Bliss, the Disney Channel show had some of what would eventually become Saved by the Bell, but lacked the focus and writing to really make it work. It was cancelled after just one season, after which NBC took back the rights and threw out a lot of it, but kept a good few key ingredients. Most importantly, they retained some of their key actors. They made the leap to Bayside High, California, where they were joined by some other now famous faces. The focus shifted more to be on their friendships, relationships, and bending of the school rules, with one character going on to become the face of the show and feature a fourth wall breaking gimmick that added a whole new dimension. Miss Bliss episodes were later woven into the series, but Saved by the Bell essentially started as a spin off, and it actually realizes the potential Miss Bliss had. It touches on generational themes that affect most teenagers, but is mostly a light hearted, funny, and sweet portrayal of high school life. 2. Frasier from the original show Cheers Now, it is no easy task following up a beloved decade-spanning ensemble sitcom with a spin-off that focuses on just one character. Frasier, however, defied just about all expectations to not only match the high bar set by Cheers, but leap over it. Cheers was essentially Friends before Friends was Friends. It's a perfect example of a hangout sitcom with a wide array of wonderful characters, a lot of heart, and a very accessible sense of humour. Frasier, on the other hand, is focused on a smaller cast and attempts to take a more sophisticated look at things, which is exactly where the humour comes in. The series is a high farce and perfectly pitched as such. The masterstroke isn't just the casting of David Hyde Pierce as Frasier's younger brother Niles, but John Mahoney as their father, who gives the series its warmth and cuts right through the bullshit. The show's mix of high and low humour meant it was as funny as any of its peers, but it was just how clever it was that really set it apart. 1. The Simpsons from the original show, The Tracy Ullman Show the Tracy Ullman Show was a great example of how to do a variety series, with its superb writer's room ensuring it regularly generated laughs and critical approval, if not high ratings. It'll always be remembered, however, for giving life to the Simpson family. Producer James L. Brooks invited Matt Groening to turn his Life in Hell comic strip into animated shorts for the series, which would play before and after the commercials. Groening instead created The Simpsons based upon his own family life. The shorts were initially alternated with another series, but proved so popular that they became a permanent edition, and in 1989, they got their own series starting with a Christmas special. The rest, as they say, is history. The Tracy Ullman Show ended after four seasons, whilst The Simpsons is so much more than a TV show. Running for 30 seasons and counting, it's a piece of pop culture history. It's a true TV phenomenon and, in the minds of some, the finest, funniest sitcom ever made. 
And that brings us to the end of this list of 10 TV spin-offs better than the original. Tell us in the comments below which ones are your favourites and remember to check out whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every single day. As always, I've been Amy from What Culture, and I'll catch you next time.